Okay, um, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Precious. Good morning, Yasha. Good morning, Florence. Good morning, Rumbi. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, morning, morning. morning. I, I hope everybody. I hope everybody is 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 fine this morning, and um, it's good. <clears throat> it's good to have you back. So, um, I think the last time we met, we we talked about uh, a number of issues in terms of um, how to uh, conduct research, um, looking at um, scientific processes of. Um, uh, doing topic selection, doing research uh, in quite uh, a number of issues and how to do literature review, the components uh, and um, a number of stuff, the sources of literature, uh, how do we assess that, how do we write the introduction, the body, how do we conclude, uh, what is the rationale of <clears throat> Uh, the review of literature, uh, a few things that have worked for me. Um, so today we want to, to look at um, the, the theoretical framework. Uh, many people normally have challenges uh, using the, the theoretical framework. So generally, um, a theoretical framework is, is, is logically developed by the researcher. Uh, and it, it, you use it to connect a set of concepts. Um, I, I'm not sure now who was doing um, an agritourism study, uh, but if, if we are to look at agritourism study, what theories exist around, uh, around that? So you, you need to look at um, developing this framework uh, based on uh, a set of uh, a set of concepts that makes up your topic, uh, a set of premises. So they you, you can actually develop your theoretical framework <clears throat> from one or more theories uh, that you as a researcher create to to scaffold uh, a study. <clears throat> Maybe to do um, it much more practically. Precious, what are you writing about, or what is your topic about? I was basically going to look at social capital. Social capital. And what what theories what theories do people in social capital research use? Mm, at the moment, I hadn't gone that far. Oh, okay. So what we are simply saying is, if if you were to do research on social capital, we want you to have an understanding of what are the theories. Uh, that that can inform your inform your study uh, in 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 that process. Uh, maybe let me have another one. Yasha, what are you writing? Come on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we can hear you loud, Yasha. Just go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, I was the one who said the last time that I'm thinking of a topic in agritourism. Oh, okay. Agritourism researchers, what theories do they use? Agritourism, well, uh, what about agritourism are you writing about? I know I wanted to, the interest came about when we are developing a degree, a master's program actually okay. at MSU. So from then on, like I probably something that we have to look into. It just came as a more like an extension of what we are teaching or what we are learning already. So I wanted to find out more on it as well as a module uh, and a way of studying. So we. We'll, we'll, so I'm yet maybe, to get into it as well. Maybe maybe you might need to go and look at two theories. Actually, come to mind. Uh, if if it came as a result of you developing curricula. Uh, then you, you might need to read around the stakeholder theory and see uh, if it's a theory that can underpin your study. Or you can also look at, at um, 
uh, the, the theory of planned behavior and try to see if it is going to be one of the theories that underpins your, your study. Because for every study, especially at master's level, we want to know uh, what is the theory that you are going to use to inform the thinking around, around your study. So for instance, if you are looking <clears throat> at employer motivation, there are so many theories of motivation around which of these theories uh, is likely to, to influence um, your, your, your thinking around, um, your thinking around um, the, the, the work that you are writing. So you, you need to have at least one theory. Um, if, if you are good enough, then you can have uh, more theories that you are going to use to inform uh, the thinking around, <clears throat> around your study. So to create a theoretical framework, um, to create a theoretical framework as a researcher, to create a theoretical framework, um, let me just mute people, uh, to create a theoretical framework as a researcher, you must define any concept. So you, you should be in a position to define what social capital is all about. You should be in a position to define what um, agritourism is all about. So as a researcher, you must be able to, to define any concepts uh, and theories that is going to provide grounding of the research. So the reason why we want theory, we want to know uh, what is um, the, the grounding of this research. And if, if we know your theory, uh, it, it, it will be easier for you to, to now show or demonstrate what is your contribution to that theory or what is your contribution to, to, to literature. So research at master's level, and I'm sure this could be one of the, the, the answers to the previous question, how different is it from, from the bachelor's, uh, is maybe at the bachelor's you are not worried about uh, what theory informs your study. Uh, what theories um, ground your, your, your research, what theories uh, you, you unite makes a logical connection of your work uh, and how does this theory relate to, to the study that is being uh, been carried out. So in, in, in short, one can say that um, a, a theoretical framework is, is basically the reflection of the work of the researcher uh, the, the work of the researcher or the, 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 research, the, the work the researcher is engaged in and uh, it uses uh, it uses a theory it uses a theory to, to, to show how uh, theory is grounding this study or how theory uh, is informing <clears throat> is informing this particular uh, this particular research. So generally people need to have theories and once your theory is in place, it's, it's, it's now become easier for you to, to, to generate what is a, a, a conceptual framework. Uh, this is my, my, my easier way of saying it. Um, if, 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 if Nyasha, you are to do your, if you are to demonstrate um, agritourism research in, in a picture, how does it look like? So a, a, a conceptual framework is a mental representation of your study. If I'm to say, draw me, a picture about your study, what, what are you going to draw? That is what a conceptual uh, framework is, 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 is all about. So if you are to, 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 to put uh, your social capital research in a diagram, how is it going to, uh, how is it going to, uh, to, to look like? Uh, maybe I should, um, I, I should get some, some examples here, let me see. Um, yes. So you, you, you should be able to, to demonstrate how, how does, how is it going to, to, to look in, in, in the process. So if, if you can't, if you can't, um, diagrammatize it, then there is surely, uh, surely a problem. Uh, in, in, in whatever you are you are working on. So people should be able to uh, to, to do that. Um, let me stop sharing this um, and then share another screen. So this is um, a study we conducted at some point. Um, I hope it's you can see it. It's the influence of what 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 um, so what 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 I'm saying to you is, um, in in this particular study, because we were measuring 
um, the, the influence of course experience, satisfaction, loyalty on students' word of mouth and re-enrollment intentions, uh, we found that it's, 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 it's better we, we use uh, the theory of planned behavior. So when you write this particular section, you, you are not um, just entirely reproducing what the theory say. You, you need to show why does this theory, why is this theory appropriate uh, for grounding the, 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 the study that you, are, uh, that you are doing? For instance, if I read you this paragraph, the attitude towards uh, a behavior is generally concerned with the individual's positive or negative feelings about performing the behavior. Uh, in, in the context of this study, it is the re-enrolling of postgraduate programs uh, in Zimbabwean universities. So I, I'm actually looking at the theory and showing how this theory is influencing our thinking uh, in, in, this particular, in this particular study. So you, you always need to show what is the, so this forms my theoretical, uh, my theoretical framework. Uh, then uh, apart from that, showing you uh, the, the, the conceptual framework, um, where did we put it? So, in, in, in this particular instance, this now shows um, how we have conceptualized uh, the, the kind of study we, we are doing. So I, I can actually show it in a, in a diagram form. So conceptual framework, like I said, it's, 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 it's a mental represent, it's, it's a pictorial representation of your study. Uh, a mental representation. If you were to summarize that particular study, uh, how do you do it in, in a diagram? So for us, this is what we summarized. We are looking at student course experience, student satisfaction, student loyalty. And we are saying these variables, they predict word of mouth communication. And word of mouth mediates uh, re-enrollment intentions. Uh, so so you, you should be able to show this uh, as, as, as a researcher to say, if I'm to summarize my work in, 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 as a concept uh, in a diagram, uh, what, should, uh, what, should, what should be working? Um, I don't know if I do that better. Um, so um, a conceptual framework, is, it also shows the justification of why a given study should be, should be conducted. So if you look at those diagrams, in, in our review, in our background, we have been arguing that studies that have looked at those three constructs, uh, student um, course experience, student satisfaction, student loyalty, informing word of mouth communication and word of mouth influencing uh, whether someone has completed a bachelor's degree and wants to come back and do a master's, those kind of research is, is limited. So a conceptual framework is now my justification of why I should go ahead and do this particular study. So what does a conceptual framework do? It describes the state of non-knowledge uh, in, 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 uh, in your particular research. So your whatever, you, you, you should be able to demonstrate um, what is known uh, and what is not known uh, in, your particular, in your particular field. So you must be able to demonstrate what is known and what is known. And this is usually done through a, a literature review. Um, it, it helps you to identify the gaps in our understanding uh, of a problem, of a phenomena, and it outlines the methodological underpinnings of the research project. So if you look at my, my framework, uh, I, I have already highlighted in that diagram alone that I'm testing relationships. So in, 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 in testing relationships, uh, it, it means my methodology is quantitative uh, and so forth. So if you are not testing relationships or if you are using a qualitative research, then the way you present your, your conceptual framework should be different from that, uh, from the way people present it in a quantitative study. Um, we construct this framework to answer two important questions. Um, why is this research important? And what contributions might these findings make uh, to what is already known? So we know that many people have written about word of mouth communications. We know that people have written about um, students, um, student satisfaction. But what we don't know is whether 
um, there is literature around the, the pathway of student communication, loyalty, and course experiences influencing um, uh, word of mouth um, communications directly and indirectly influencing uh, the the the, the re enrollment intentions. So that is what it it should help you to uh, to do, and you you should have it. So um, to to add more flesh to this, so what, what you're gonna do is. This is how it, it, it works. So your conceptual framework is a researcher constructed, logically developed. Um, you are arguing for the need of the, the current study that you are doing. You are it, it, it shapes your design of the research design that you're going to use. And it guides the design of, uh, of the research you're going to use. Um, like I said, it answers why this research is important and how do you contribute to, to new knowledge. Then theoretical framework, again, is a researcher constructed structure, but the, the, the purpose here is for you to, to, explain, um, to explain the concepts, the premises uh, from theory or from theories that ground your research. Uh, and it answers how does this theory shape your, 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 your study? How does the theory of planned behavior shape your study? How does the theory of McGregor's two uh, no 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 Hesbeck's two factor theory motivation shapes your study? How does uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory shape your study? How does uh, the social exchange theory shape your your study? Then when we talk about theory, we are simply looking at um, an abstract description of the relationship between ideas, statements, concepts. And these ideas and statements, they should be able to help us uh, to, to understand the world. So what happens is um, the conceptual framework should be finalized before data collection. The conceptual framework is finalized before data collection. So you, you should have your conceptual framework finalized before you have decided to collect the data. Um, your, your theory, <clears throat> so if, if you look at that, so you should finalize your, your conceptual framework before data is collected. Um, your, your theory is selected and operationalized to create a framework. So for you to be able to create a conceptual framework, you should have selected the theory first. Um, then that theory, you use it to operationalize uh, the creation of a framework. And this framework should support the research question. So you, you, the, your choice of the theoretical framework or your, the, th the choice of the theory should be based on the research question that you want uh, answered. So if, if you're looking at agritourism, the development of the curricula and so forth, uh, does it have anything to do with stakeholders uh, as part of the research question? If it doesn't have, then it means your stakeholder theory does not help you in, in that. So the theory is selected, operationalized for it to create a framework for you. Um, and this must support the research question. And it must also have an influence uh, on how the, the data is going to be analyzed. Um, in terms of your, your theory, you, we, what we are saying is we use this theory for you to generate hypotheses for your study, especially if you're doing a quantitative research. So you, you need to use your theory in the generation of your hypotheses uh, in, in, in your testing, uh, and it leads to theory refinement uh, or, 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 or falsification. So what we are saying is when you are writing about theory, uh, that's how you, you need to approach the way you, you, you formulate your hypothesis, uh, because we want to find out uh, whether your hypotheses are going to be confirmed or rejected. And when they get rejected, uh, it, it, it means maybe the theory probably doesn't work well in certain contexts, and that becomes the, the addition you are making to, uh, to, to, to research. So that's how uh, the objective deductive works especially in terms of how do we refine theory through hypothesis testing. So you, you, you move from your conceptual framework, uh, then your theoretical framework, your theory, and you move to your data collection. Um, then the, the, the subjective people, 
people who do qualitative research. So the first explanation was for people who do quantitative research. Uh, then the, the other arrow starting from the data going outwards uh, is how things work when people are looking at, uh, uh, at um, qualitative data. So with qualitative data, you, 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 the, 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 the conceptual framework is, is actually going to be developed after the, the data has been collected. So this is how it works. You, you need to have your theory. Um, this involves different ways of seeing the world uh, and it shapes the aspects of the research. Um, and once you have that, then you develop your tentative theoretical framework uh, that you propose. And you, you need to refine this framework once the data is collected uh, and once your, your understanding of the data uh, is enhanced and it involves and eventually you, you develop a conceptual framework um, as, 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 as part of the insights coming from the data, as part of the insights coming from the theory uh, and the theoretical framework. Uh, that is how it, um, it works. So I thought maybe I should have added this to, uh, to, 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 to this lecture. <coughs> Goals are not objectives. Um, the, then the challenge is uh, Regis is not here. Uh, so I, I would want it to have um, confirmed this. Universities are different. So goals are not objectives. Um, research goals and objectives. When we are talking about what is your goal in this study or what is your aim of the study uh, and the objectives, we are talking about two different, two different stuff. So the goal and objectives, they must be stated at the beginning of, of your study. Um, to, 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 to say usually once you have written your introduction, uh, the goal of the study should actually be, be stated. Of course, in, 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 in writing proposals and dissertations, there's always a section where we state, uh, we state the objectives uh, separately and, and, and all that. So these two aspects, they help you as, as, as a researcher uh, during the process of formulating your research persons, during the process of formulating the, the hypotheses, um, they, they help you, they help the reader uh, of the work to, to judge whether the investigator or the researcher uh, actually achieved these objectives or not. And this is one of the reasons why when you are writing your conclusions of the study, uh, when the dissertation is done, uh, you, you, you need to conclude the best objective uh, based on what you find, um, what is the conclusion for each objective or for each research question that you, you, you have posed. So you, you don't just write conclusions without structure. Uh, you, your conclusions chapter of the dissertation actually need to reflect that for objective one, what are the conclusions you are making based on literature, based on the findings that you collected. So it's, it's, it's very important to, to, to have that. Um, so when we talk about a goal of a study, we, you are describing what is the aim of this work uh, in broad terms. What do you seek to, uh, to achieve uh, in, this particular, uh, in this particular work? Then the objectives, these should be more specific and they must relate directly to, to the research question or the research aim. So once you formulate a research aim, please unpack it. Uh, and then try to develop specific objectives that you need to meet in order for you to achieve the aim. Because if objectives are not met, then it means the research aim is also not, uh, not met. So objectives are more specific. They should relate to, to the research question. Uh, and we normally divide them into primary objectives or rather a main objective and secondary objectives. So the primary objective is what exactly is bound to be, to be achieved. In most universities, the primary objective is you translating your research topic and make it a primary, uh, a primary objective or a main objective. And that primary objective needs to be um, what can I say, um, decompose. Uh, you need to decompose it and, and formulate secondary objectives. Secondary objectives we are looking at, by the way, how do we then achieve uh, the, 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 the primary objective or the main objective? Um, so it's, it's, it's those things that you, you really need to, uh, to, to have. 
So these objectives, like I said, they should be closely related to the question or they should be closely related to the research problem. So if your research, pro if your statement of the problem is not good enough, you are not going to formulate good objectives. So formulate a good problem statement for you to formulate uh, a good research objective. Um, they, they should cover all aspects of the problem. So if you are looking at social capital, uh, agritourism, all aspects about this topic should be reflected uh, in, the, in the research objectives. And I'm sure you have learned this even in, in strategy, in strategy uh, or in management, that objectives, uh, they need to be um, specific. Um, they need to be ordered in, in, a, in, a logical, in a logical sequence. And you should be able to, to state them in, in, in action verbs. Don't formulate objectives using things that cannot be measured. So you, you need to state your objectives in, uh, in verbs that could be evaluated. Maybe you want to describe the state of agritourism in Zimbabwe. Uh, you want to identify factors influencing uh, agritourism in Zimbabwe. You want to examine um, aspects contributing to competitiveness of agritourism in Zimbabwe. You want to compare agritourism uh, and cultural tourism. You want to analyze the relationship between this and that. You want to investigate this and that. Those are the ways through which objectives should be uh, should be formulated uh, in, 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 your, in, your, in your work. And these objectives should be smart. Um, the specific, uh, the, it, it should be very clear. Uh, we, we should be able to measure them. That's why you need to use uh, those action verbs. Uh, we, you should be able to achieve them. And that's why I was saying, when you are doing your, your, your conclusions of the study, you should show that this particular objective has been achieved. Uh, and that is also why when you are designing your instrument, each objective, each specific objective should have a set of questions, either in the interview guide or in the research, uh, in the research question. Uh, that, that makes it achievable. Um, the, 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 the research question, the, the research objective should be relevant. So if you are formulating objectives, it should speak to your topic, it should speak to your, to your problem statement, it should speak to your, um, what else? Uh, your, your research question, make it relevant. Um, generally, it, it should be it should be time bound, uh, difficult to achieve in a, in a, in, a, in a research. Uh, but what we are simply saying is uh, those objectives that you have formulated, you you should be able to achieve them. I don't know how long it takes for you to do a dissertation at the Midland State University. Um, will you be able to achieve these objectives in six months, for instance? Will you be able to achieve these objectives in, in three months, in, 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 in a year? Um, so you, when you formulate that, think about issues of time uh, in terms of you uh, achieving, achieving these objectives. Um, so they, they should be properly formulated should be specific. Uh, and one, once your objectives are formulated, once your objectives are formulated, they should inform you what kind of methodology um, I am using. Okay, let, let me pause here and, 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 and be a little more practical. Um, let me type it in my chat. Uh, where is chat? Okay. Um, the objective, uh, the objectives of the study, right? So I have these objectives of the study that I'm typing in the chat. I want to, to, to create a conversation and see what kind of methodology should I use um, to analyze.
based on those two objectives, I want to analyze the effects. Um, I wanted to say advertising there, uh, the effects, the effect of advertising on sales revenue. This is terrible. Okay, let me restart. Um, The, to analyze the effects of advertising, advertising on sales revenue. Um, what methodology should I use to analyze the effects of advertising on sales revenue to establish the relationship between the use of robots and productivity? What methodology should I use? Anybody? Do I have anyone online? I want to raise the hand. Now, if, if please, I want to raise the hand. Oh, sorry. I wanted to say, uh, say, to establish the relationship between the use of robots and productivity. I remember on, on the, you said that when you have relationship, you use quantitative. Yes, I, I use quantitative. Yeah. So, so what I'm demonstrating here is, um. The nature of your objectives, they they actually they actually informs your methodology. So the way you craft your objectives, the way you craft your topic, they should always lead you to what kind of methodology uh, you you are going to you are going to use. So um, it's 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 important that when we do that, uh, we we craft them uh, accordingly. So if I'm establishing, if I'm looking at issues around cause and effect in my objectives, then naturally my, my methodology should be quantitative. So if I have to look at, um, let's say now I have these three objectives, um, don't worry about whether they are related or not, uh, but just to demonstrate. So in, in this, I, have, I want to establish the relationship between the use of robots and productivity. I want to analyze the effect of advertising on sales revenue. I want to explore the prospects of developing uh, smart urban tourism in, in, in Gweru. Um, maybe let me take out the second one. I want to establish the relationship between the use of robots and, uh, and uh, productivity. I want to explore the prospects of developing smart urban tourism in uh, in, in in Gweru. So in, in in those, I have two different kinds of objective. The other one is qualitative, and the other one is quantitative. So what it what it means is, if I am to achieve these objectives, I need to use a mixed method approach, uh, where I, I collect data that helps me measure the relationship between robots and productivity. And I collect data that helps me to understand uh, the, the, the prospects of developing urban tourism, smart urban tourism uh, in, in, in Gweru. So generally, when you formulate your objectives, properly formulate them because they have got a bearing on the kind of research methodology you are going to use. They have a bearing in terms of how you are going to collect the data. Uh, they have a bearing in terms of how you are going to analyze, uh, analyze the data. For instance, if I go back to, to, to analyzing the effect of uh, advertising on sales revenue, I'm looking at cause and effect. So what it means is based on this, it informs what kind of analysis I need to do. So for instance, I might need to do uh, a, a linear regression analysis 
to, to, to just test this relationship, um, I might need to do some correlation analysis to just establish the strength of this relationship. So every objective you're going to formulate, it has got a bearing on your methodology. It has a bearing on, on the way you collect the data. It has a bearing on the way you analyze the data. It has got a bearing on the way you are going to interpret the data. So research objectives, don't take them for granted. It's quite a short, um, it's, it's, it's a small size um, of what you write in your proposal or in your whatever, but it, it informs quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of stuff. Um, we normally use quantitative, we normally use research hypothesis in quantitative research. So if you if you have if you're doing quantitative research, you also need to to formulate some hypotheses. Uh, so for instance, if my objective was to establish the relationship between the use of robots and productivity, uh, I may formulate um, um, the, the, the 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 relationship a hypothesis by saying um, there is a positive relationship between. Uh, the use of robots and productivity in a fab. Or alternatively, I can say there is no positive relationship between the use of robots and productivity uh, because I, I want to test that. So once I collect the data, I want to see whether this hypothesis is, is confirmed or it's rejected. Um, so hypotheses are a good guess about something. So a hypothesis is a statement of research question in a measurable form that at the end, you may want to, uh, to, 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 to test it and see. For instance, I think there are talks um, uh, that I have been following with keen interest where people are saying, um, why is China so generous with the vaccine? So the hypothesis there is we want to find out whether the Chinese vaccine kills or not. So if people are vaccinated and they are dying, then it means the hypothesis is confirmed. Uh, if people are vaccinated with the Chinese vaccine uh, and they are not dying, then it means um, the, 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 the hypothesis is rejected. Uh, in in all those kind of uh, in all those kind of stuff. So a hypothesis is defined as a prediction or an explanation of a relationship between one or more independent variables. Uh, those are the predisposing variables, and in a dependent variable, a dependent variable is the outcome. So if you go into the one for for the robots, then the robots is an independent variable that influences productivity. In this case, productivity is a dependent uh, is a dependent variable. So you can formulate a. Pro you are now trying to say the use of robots predicts that um, productivity is going to be high. Uh, the use of advertising predicts that our sales revenue is going to, to increase. So we want to test that and see, is it true that if we increase advertising, sales revenue is going to be high? If we use robots, productivity is going to, to increase. So a hypothesis, um, it, it, it translates the, the, the problem statement uh, into a into a precise and a clear prediction of expected outcomes. Does an increase in, in, in advertising result in, in an increase in, in revenue? So it must be emphasized that um, hypotheses are not meant to be haphazard cases, uh, but should reflect the depth of knowledge, imagination and experience of the one doing the research in order for you to formulate uh, this good hypothesis. So it can be a now hypothesis uh, or it can be uh, an, an, an alternative, uh, an alternative uh, hypothesis. Um, okay, so let me end there. Uh, I was also asked to do a run through with you in terms of um, writing a proposal. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting with caution here because I, I don't know how proposals at MSU are structured. But um, I'm, I'm gonna use the structure of my university uh, and maybe a general structure, then you guys are gonna choose what, uh, what fits for you. Um, so in, in my university, this is how we want our pr uh, proposals to be structured. Uh, they should have an introduction. And an introduction, um, 
in the in an introduction, please. Uh, at this level, people are not interested in telling you that this proposal is going to cover a background of the study, a problem statement, what, 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 what. that's some bachelor kind of stuff. Um, in, a, in an introduction, you, you need to give us some context of, of the study. What is the study all about? That is what people are more interested in reading at the level of graduate level going forward. So your, your introduction should be about what is the context of research that you are focusing on? Uh, then once you have presented for a context of your research in a paragraph, maybe, uh, then you go on to present your background of the problem. Um, so in your, in your background of the problem, um, people make mistakes uh, to say that, um, let's say you are writing about agritourism at the Midland State University. Uh, the background of the problem is not about you telling me uh, the Midland State University was formed, I don't know, maybe 1999 or in 2000 or whatever time it was formed. Uh, the first vice chancellor of the university was so, 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 baby, baby, or what, what. The, that's not a background of, of the study. Uh, people should not give us a historical overview of what uh, their company or the, 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 the organization that they are researching into. It, it doesn't constitute a background of the study. Um, background of the problem is a section where you, you need to, 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 to provide some kind of a mini literature review showing what has led to the problem as supported by literature. So you, you need to really read that and be able to, 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 to show that uh, these are the issues that have led to the problem as is supported by literature. In a background of the study, the, the researcher is supposed to demonstrate what the research has done. So if I'm to look at social capital, um, that is precious area, I, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in reading a section that talks about what, what are the key issues that, um, people who are writing about social exchange have written about what, what, what research has done. What are the key issues that people have written about around social exchange? Uh, what is the key issues that they have not written about? Because that is the gap. So in your background of the study, you should be able to demonstrate what is the research gap uh, that your study is talking about. Uh, what are the dominant aspects people in social exchange research are writing about? In social capital research or in agritourism, what are they writing about? What is research done and what is research not done? What is it that we know and what is it that we don't know that we should be knowing which constitutes part of your, your research? So in your background of the study, um, a caveat there, if Midland State University accepts um, the, 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 a historical overview, that's, that's them, but that's, that's, that's not how uh, people should write a background of the research. In a background of the research, especially even if you read research articles, they, they don't talk about organizations that they are conducting research in. They talk about what is research done, um, what, what, what is it that research has done uh, and what is it that research uh, research has not uh, has not done? Maybe let me go to that article and and try to see if I can demonstrate um, what I'm saying uh, maybe in a paragraph or two so that you you can actually see it. Um, not sure if let me make it bigger. Okay, like that. Is it bigger enough? Anybody? Yes, we can see, Doc. Oh, okay. So um, in, 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 in a background of study, because this constitutes some kind of uh, a background of, uh, of, of study, uh, and um, what people would want to know is to know that what is it that has been written and what has not been written. So if you can see this paragraph, I am actually demonstrating background issues in, in this paragraph. Uh, private and public universities in Zimbabwe are competing for students to generate enough cash flows for survival. The competitive environment brought several challenges uh, such as declining re-enrollment for postgraduate studies. Re-enrollment for postgraduate studies 
He has also been further affected by the challenge of dropouts. This challenge is exacerbated by high unemployment in Zimbabwe. In a country where post-secondary education is expensive, less is known. Did you hear that? Less is known concerning re-enrollment intentions of students seeking to pursue postgraduate studies. That's why I have provided some background of what people have written about. People have written about the challenges of dropouts. Uh, people have written about high unemployment, but they have not written about um, re-enrollment intentions of students seeking to pursue um, postgraduate uh, post studies. Um, I can demonstrate another one here um, on, on this second, on this paragraph. Yes, yes. Um, let me mute Tendai there. Um, Zimbabwean HEIs are continuously searching for innovative ways to improve provision of educational services. Though the constructs of satisfaction and loyalty appear to be over researched I am demonstrating as a researcher that I am aware that issues of satisfaction, many people have written about. Issues of loyalty, many people have written about that. However, I, I, I went on to say that, we went on to say in this study, Limited studies have measured the pathway of course experience, satisfaction, loyalty, word of mouth um, communications, and re-enrollment intentions of postgraduate studies of um, for postgraduate studies from a developing country with perennial political and economic challenges such as Zimbabwe. So I have demonstrated that um, things have been over researched. But I still think, we still think that uh, research can still be done because uh, there are limited studies that have measured the pathway of how do aspects of course experience, satisfaction, loyalty, word of mouth, um, re-enrollment intentions work in a pathway. The focus of previous studies have often been on investigating the link between teaching quality, student satisfaction, loyalty, and other relationships separately, which is not our focus. Uh, and based on this, the current study aims to, remember I was saying, in your background of study or in your introduction, you should state the overall uh, broad aim of your, of, of your work. So this current study six or aims to establish the pathway to student re-enrollment intentions through student course experience, satisfaction, loyalty, uh, and WOM in the context of Zimbabwe uh, using the theory of planned behavior as a framework. Uh, we, we seek to answer all those kind of stuff. Um, is that clear? I don't know, maybe. Okay, so that is what should constitute um, a background of the study. Then you come to your problem statement and you should be able to, to, to demonstrate that a research problem exists and it requires solution. You, you need to, to, to give us an ideal situation. If things are working correctly, uh, how do they work? And what is the current situation regarding what you're writing about? Uh, and then you, you need to demonstrate uh, the gaps in literature uh, and if there is need for statistics to amplify the problem, uh, please put those kind of issues in that. Then you you, you put your, your main objectives or your main research person, depending on what you, your university wants, at least at our university, um, it's either you go for objectives or for research persons, not but I'm not sure about uh, Midland State University. Um, then you, 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 you generate your specific research objectives that we talked about. Uh, then if you are doing a quantitative research, we also expect to see some, one or two hypotheses that you want to, to look at. Uh, then you, you should be able to provide why is your study significant? Uh, and your study should be significant at master's level, I think, on two aspects. Uh, what are you adding to existing literature? What is your contribution to existing literature? So you are, you are supposed to do a research uh, that is significant in, in the sense that it contributes uh, to, to, existing, to existing literature on, 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 on certain aspects. 
uh, it, it should be able to contribute to existing literature uh, on, on, on certain aspects. Uh, so if you can't show the contribution of the study, uh, then it becomes um, it becomes uh, difficult uh, for, for 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 people to to say that your 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 study is is is, is good enough. Um, so you you should be able to 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 make some some contribution to uh, to, to 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 the study and then and so forth. So you you should be able to show what is it that you are adding to, to literature and, and all that. So for instance, in, in this particular sentence, um, we were demonstrating what is it that we are adding to an existing board of literature. The findings are crucial in advancing understanding of managers in the higher and higher education sector on how they can influence students' decision-making processes. So this is both a theoretical contribution uh, and, uh, and a practical contribution. And we went on to say, um, this study contributes to literature on higher education marketing by analyzing the influence of course experiences, student satisfaction, loyalty, uh, on WOM and re enrollment intentions among final year undergraduate students. So when you are doing your social exchange capital, uh, social exchange, social capital study, you need to put a, a sentence like this. What is it that you are, uh, you are adding? Uh, what is it that you are adding to, to, to literature uh, and, and so forth? And secondly, your significance of the study should also be based on, should also be based on Practically, uh, what do we benefit uh, from your research going on as people who are working in agritourism? Uh, what do we benefit? So you need to state those two things. They form part of your, uh, your, 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 your significance of the study. You also need to include delimitations. What is it that you are covering? The geographical boundaries and the population boundaries. So in, in our study that I was showing on the screen just a moment ago, uh, our, our, our population boundary was final year students uh, doing a bachelor's degree. That is our population. Uh, and our boundary, our geographical boundary is we conducted that particular study in Zimbabwe. Uh, so in, in your case, I don't know agritourism, where is the research taking place, the geographical location of it, uh, and what is the population boundary of that. The same happens for social capital, pro, uh, social capital research. Then you also need to demonstrate uh, what are the limitations uh, of the study, what are the limitations of the study. When we talk about limitations, um, one thing I like it's where I work currently is that there are some things that they have indicated categorically in their prospectus for postgraduate studies to say that time is not a limitation of the study. Money is not a limitation of the study. Brilliant. Why? Uh, when you look at the limitations of the study, we are looking at methodological and design aspects that influences the way you interpret results and the way you report the results. So the limitations of the study should arise from your methodology. So if you have used, let's say, if you are using a qualitative research uh, and your sample is small, there is a methodological limitation as well as a design limitation in that the findings you are going to get cannot be generalized because your sample size is relatively small. That's a good limitation. Um, so people should always think about limitations in the context of, um, in the context of um, methodology, in the context of design. So if your sample size is small, if your population uh, is um, a certain kind of population which doesn't represent the entire population, then you, you, you generate uh, those kind of stuff. We also expect in our proposal to have a preliminary literature review for you to just show some awareness of what are the gaps that exist in literature uh, and why is your, your, your stand um, justifiable for you to continue with it. Uh, then you also need to look at uh, your, your methodology in terms of design 
uh, what is the design. The design should be linked to the topic, to the problem, to the objectives, like I said, your population, uh, what constitutes your unit of analysis, who are your respondents, then how do you generate uh, the, the sample, uh, what sample size issues are you looking at, um, your instrument. Um, if you are doing quantitative, you, you need to use a, a, a questionnaire, for example. If you are doing qualitative, then you need to use some other um, instruments like, um, let's say an interview guide and other instruments that you might find that are suitable for that. Then you, you talk, uh, you, you, you propose your, your, your procedure. Uh, what is your procedure of data collection? How do you collect data? Um, what comes first? Um, normally we expect our students here to, to first obtain an ethical clearance. Once the ethical clearance is obtained, we expect you to, to, to run a pilot study of your instrument uh, to see if what you are asking makes sense, whether people out there are gonna understand your, your, your instrument. Uh, then you, 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 if you are to do quantitative research, uh, after piloting your, your, your study, you correct your instrument, then you administer your instrument. If you are to do interviews, you need to explain how do people get invited to the interviews uh, and, and so forth. How do, we, how do you do the interviews? How do you record the interviews and all those kind of stuff? We also expect a portion uh, of uh, the, the section under your research methodology to outline how is the data going to be analyzed? Which software are you going to use? Uh, which analysis are you going to use? Uh, and we also expect finally um, um, you to talk about the ethical issues. And I prefer students talking about ethical issues um, before data collection, during data collection and after data collection, um, those kind of stuff needs to be need to be addressed. How many pages should the research proposal ideally be? Um, anyone who knows how, uh, what, what is the length of um, proposals at the Midlands State University? How long are they? Hello, Doc. Um, at Hello, the Midlands State. Yes, Precious. Yeah, um, I'm not going to talk about the Midlands State University per se, but uh, from other institutions that I've dealt with, I've heard them talking of around 15 pages. 15? <laughs> yes. Wow, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at my university, the master's student is supposed to present a six-page proposal at the level of master's. And at the level of the doctorate, you're supposed to present a 10-page proposal. I think that's good. It uh, stops the waffling aspect. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Mm. 15, that's a lot. 15, 15 you are even writing a journal article. Yeah. Okay. So um, the generic format, so I have given you the format of the university where I work for, but in, in a generic format, when you guys are doing your proposal, you, you should always make sure that the rationale of the study is there. Why is it a good idea to do this research? You should demonstrate that in the proposal. Why is it a good idea to do this research? Those are the aspects that I was explaining uh, in, in, in a background of the study. What research is done, what research is not done, and what we should be doing uh, to, 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 to ensure that these gaps are covered. So your rationale or the motivation of the study should be explained in the research proposal. Uh, you should demonstrate why it is a good idea that an agritourism study should go ahead. You should demonstrate why it is a good idea uh, that a social capital research should, uh, should go ahead. You must be able to provide uh, a preliminary literature study or a literature review. What other people have said about your topic? 
uh, what other people have said about your, your study. You, you need to demonstrate that maybe in two or three paragraphs that people writing about social ex social capital have talked about this. People writing about agritourism have dominantly talked about this, but they didn't address that and that and that. Um, that becomes uh, that becomes very good. So uh, preliminary literature review is, is is very important for you to to do that. Um, then you should also be able to provide uh, in the proposal a research problem. What is it that you want to study? Your unity of analysis and to what purpose? What do you want to, to achieve in that? So you, you should be able to demonstrate your problem, what you want to study and what, after studying that, what does this study achieve? So you should have some research objectives uh, in that. Then you should be able to, to show your research design. Uh, your research design should be based, it should, it should be appropriate and you should be able to justify why it is appropriate. So tell us what is the most appropriate type of study uh, that you're going to do to answer the research problem effectively. Are you going to do an experiment? Are you going to do a case study? Are you going to do a survey? Are you going to do monitoring and evaluation? Are you going to do discourse analysis? Are you going to do exploratory research? Are you going to do causal research? Are you going to do descriptive research? What is your design? And ideally, the design should be appropriate based on your study. Uh, not on based on what other books say. Um, then the, the methodology, um, here we are looking at how will you gather and analyze the evidence to address the research problem you have worked out? Are you going to gather the data qualitatively? Are you going to gather the data quantitatively? Are you going to gather the data using both qualitative and mixed, uh, and mixed methods? So it, it, it must be clear there, how will you gather and analyze the evidence to address uh, the, the, the problem? So um, I always think that people should be able to do this clearly and it should be very easy. So you, you need to just understand why is it a good idea to do this research? If you don't have a gap, then it's not a good idea to do this research. Uh, you should have done your literature review to just have an understanding what other people said and how does your study fit into the existing uh, into the existing uh, into the existing literature. Uh, then your, your your research design and all those kind of stuff. So normally when I teach, I normally want people to 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 give to answer these things and 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 we talk. Um, perhaps you guys have not read about that, uh, so that. In, in, in my class, I always expect people to give me the rationale of their study. What is it? Why is it a good idea that they're doing it? And um, if I ask um, um, precious social capital, who are the key authors around that? Uh, what are the key issues that they talk at this level? You should have an understanding of what do they say uh, and, and all those kind of, of, of stuff. Then maybe a quick run through, um, I think I'm almost done. I need to just quickly run through this. Your methodology, it, it's, it's, it explains a, um, how you are going to solve the problem. Um, please don't confuse methodology and research methods because the research methods talks about <clears throat> the methods that you employ uh, in order for you to, 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 to conduct the research. Um, so, with methodology, you are supposed to specify everything from philosophy, um, guiding your study to collection methods, right up to, to, to the analysis of, of, of it. So a research methodology is, is, is very important in your, in your proposal or in your final write-up. Um, and the methodology should be logical, scientific, science-ness, and it must be believable. Um, for you to get your work passed and approved, uh, your methodology should be watertight. Uh, if you are looking for funding, most sponsors, they pay attention to this section than anything else. Um, follow the most common headings in research methodology, and please don't make this section another literature review chapter. 
So in, in your methodology, key issues that you need to have there is the design, um, the methodology, uh, and the methods. So is your design an experiment? Is it a survey? Is it a case study? Is it descriptive? Is it discourse? Is it, there are so many designs that you can, you can find. Um, then your methodology, is it quantitative? Um, so normally when you choose a design, if you say you're going to use a survey design, please explain why a survey design is the appropriate design for your study. If you are going to use a case study, please explain why a case study is going to be uh, the most appropriate design. If you are going to use a causal or an explanatory design, please explain why such design is the most appropriate. Um, and the, your choice of your design should also be um, appropriate for the methodology you've chosen. If you are using a quantitative methodology or a qualitative or a mixed method or a participatory method um, methodology, please make sure that uh, the, the design you have chosen works. So you can choose, let's say, um, uh, a discourse analytic study and your methodology is quantitative, or you can choose um, a causal design and your methodology is qualitative, or you can choose um, a, a, a sequential explanatory design when your, 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 your methodology is qualitative. That works for uh, a, quantitative, a, a mixed method. Uh, a mixed method design. So methodology talks about these three things together, the design, the methodology, and the research methods, right? Um, so I, I, I think I, I will run through. So in terms of your design, we are, we are looking at um, an indication of the type of study that you're going to do. Is it a survey? Is it a case study? Is it an experiment? Uh, is it a discourse analytic? Is it a descriptive study? Is it an exploratory study? That's the design. So the distinction between a design and methodology uh, is analogous to the difference between uh, design and method in any, in many other fields of creative production. Right, so like architecture, fashion, cooking and technology. So when you look at a design, uh, I, I'm sure you have seen people building houses in Zimbabwe. Uh, a, a design is that plan where, where the Gweru City Council approves that you can now build. That's, that's the plan uh, that you, you are going to, to, to use. But then the method of the methodology of building is not on the plan. So if you leave a plan there, the house will never come. You now need to find out a methodology of how this house is going to, brought, to be brought up into, into life. So the design captures the idea, the notion of what the product is being conceptualized looks like. So for you to, if you are to say, if I want to achieve this, do I need to do an experiment you are conceptualizing? Do I need to do a case study you are conceptualizing? That's, that's a design. The method or the methodology, it captures the how of realizing this design. How do we realize this design? How do we realize this design? That's methodology. So going off forward there, um, if I am to, to, to do this design forward, so th th there are differences between um, several designs, experiments, surveys, evaluations, case studies, uh, causal designs, descriptive designs, exploratory designs, uh, and, and so forth. So the difference between these designs are not primarily a difference in methodology or a method, but it's a difference in design. More specifically, in the type of the study that you are looking at, uh, and also the differences in the form of reasoning uh, that makes these things different. So you, your, your research design, it refers to your overall strategy that you choose to integrate components of the study in, in a logical manner, so that you will be able to address the key issues in your, in your study uh, and, and so forth. So there are quite a number of designs. You can think of descriptive designs, descriptive survey, exploratory, explanatory, experiment, causal, case studies. You, you should be able to choose. And once you choose, you should be able to, 
uh, to justify that. Then when we talk about methodology, research methodology also is in a methodological approach, because you find some people say methodological approach, research methodology, is the logic or principles that underpin the road, right? So you, you find like from, um, from research methodology, if you separate the, the, the word method or math, and then you leave a hodl there, hodl, it's, it's, it's a Greek, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a Greek philosophy word. So if, if, if you look at the hodls in the methodology or the hodl in the methodology, the hodl there, it, it means the road that one, one needs to take in order for you to reach the destination, in order for you to achieve the research problem, right? So the methodology is the road you are taking in order for you to answer the research problem or the principles that, that underpins your approach, your, your choice of a broad approach to conduct research. Is it qualitative? Is it quantitative? Is it mixed method? Which road are you taking in order to arrive at a destination? So we have got quantitative methodology, qualitative methodology, mixed methodology. Uh, and these three approaches, they manifest three uh, quite different stances or relationships between the social researcher and the social world. So these stances, um, if you are doing quantitative research, you, you are normally thinking in terms of being an outsider because you don't need to be inside to get information. So you can administer the questionnaire from outside. That makes, so quantitative research takes an outside stance to understanding the phenomena. Qualitative research takes an inside stance to understand the phenomena because the key characteristic of qualitative research is the researcher is the main participant in the study. In the quantitative, sometimes I might not need to be there uh, to, do this, uh, to do this research. I can send it to someone or do it online, but for you to be um, doing qualitative research, you need to be having an inside presence. Uh, or the participant, and sometimes even the actor or agent change. If you are to do uh, participatory, you also need to, to do some kind of participation in, in that. So maybe to, to, to just show the difference, uh, when you look at the issues of research methods, methodological is a term that is rather high level indication of a research approach or a stance. So it's, it's method plus logos that gives us methodology. It's method plus logos that gives us methodology. So it's a method that is logical that gives us methodology. That's how we get methodology. I'm not a Greek uh, philosopher, I'm not teaching Greek. Right. So the term research method, um, it, it refers to a uh, research task or specific choices one has to make uh, in, in one of the four domains. Like for instance, if you are to do research, uh, what, kind of what kind of method are you going to use to select your sample? Uh, are you going to use probability or non-probability? We call that method uh, of, of selection. Then we have got method of measurement. Uh, are you going to use some test items? Are you going to use some scaled items or a scale like the five point Likert scale, the six point Likert scale, the seven point Likert scale? You need to, to choose there. What is your method of, of measurement? Are you going to use categorical observations? Are you going to use physical measures or something? Then there is a method of data collection are you going to collect data using focus group interviews, group interviews, uh, individual interviews, observations, or you are going to collect data using uh, through questionnaires? Then there is also a method of data analysis. What are you going to use to analyze your data? Are you going to use stats? Are you going to use mathematical models? Are you going to use qualitative analytical methods? All these things, they should be um, 
reflected upon by the researcher in order for, for him or her to make sure that they choose the, the correct methods that works for, 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 their, for, the, for their study and, and all that. Um, okay, let me skip this. Uh, maybe I'll just share the, the notes with you. Uh, then you also need to make sure you have chosen your philosophy. Um, a philosophy is a way of developing knowledge uh, and you, you need to, it also helps you in the way things, uh, um, in the way you're going to interpret your, your, your data. So if, you, if your methodology is quantitative, um, your design speaks around quantitative aspects, then you need to go for the positivism uh, philosophy. Uh, because you are trying to become objective. And if you are uh, qualitative, your, your methodology is qualitative, you are using a design that suits a qualitative study, then your uh, interpretivism philosophy works better uh, for you. So the choice of your philosophy actually influence your, 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 your collection of, uh, of collection methods. Uh, it also influences uh, your, your method uh, of, of analysis. So this is perhaps how it it is gonna looks like. If you do positivism, then it means your data gathering should be quantitative. So you need to first think about the pure, pure philosophy before you think about the analysis and the methods of gathering data. So for for um, positivism, you are qualitative. So you are looking at quantitative, you are looking at issues of having big data, doing experiments, uh, doing surveys, doing some ethnography, uh, and then your research approach there is deductive. You deduce from what you get, what does this mean? So you, you describe the data uh, using descriptive statistics like your frequencies, your mean, um, your, 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 your mode, your median and all that, and you present these aspects in charts, in graphs, and in tables. Um, you also go beyond providing descriptive states, uh, try to explain relationships, uh, maybe using your, your correlation analysis, using your, your regression analysis, whether simple linear regression or multiple linear regression. My take is you guys have done statistics by your, with your statistics lecturer. Um, you can also compare means in within, within the data set, like looking at t-tests where you are simply comparing two, uh, two, two categories like male and female. You can run your t-test there. You can also compare means using uh, one-way analysis, uh, analysis of variance, the ANOVA, or you can also compare uh, the multiple analysis of variance, uh, the MANOVA. You can also use structural equation modeling. There are so many ways of, uh, of analyzing this data. Then for, for the interpretivist, um, you, uh, your, your approach should be, your methodology should be qualitative and you have got various, uh, various aspects of qualitative that you can think of there, your oral history, your ethnography, your interviews, your observations, focus group discussions and all that. And your approach to data analysis is inductive, uh, relatively subjective in there. So you can use template analysis, you can use thematic, which is the most popular one. Um, where people are analyzing data based on the themes, the, the bigger themes that have emerged. You can also use discourse analysis, um, hermeneutics, uh, grounded theory, content analysis, uh, and many other and many other aspects. So a disclaimer there is um, while this concept emanates from philosophy, it is not necessary to have to, to study philosophy in order for you to make sense of this. Uh, the purpose of setting out your research philosophy is to help you as a researcher to identify how you are going to gather your data, how you are going to, 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 to analyze uh, this, this particular data for, for your study. Right, so I think um, that's all I was having. Uh, and maybe we can we can talk maybe for the next thirty minutes uh, and see how we can help uh, we can help each other.
Uh, Doc, may I ask a question? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, I normally have uh, challenges in differentiating the content of these two, especially in a research proposal. Uh, the first being uh, the content on the background of the study. We were speaking about that. We have to talk about what other researchers have uh, covered. And now comparing that to literature review, we are also looking at what other researchers have, what, uh, have covered on that particular subject. So which material goes to the background of the study and which material goes to the literature review? Because you end up having two similar um, components of the research proposal. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Um, in, in, in the background of the study, you are not necessarily um, critiquing literature. Uh, did you get that? You, you, you are acknowledging what people have done and you are simply demonstrating what they covered and what is missing from the broader literature. That's, that's the major focus of a background of study. But in a literature review, you, you, you are now critiquing uh, the literature and your, your voice should be, uh, should, be, should be heard. Okay, let me take you back to, to the article we were using and I'll be able to show you that maybe it, it, it can help. Um, okay, um, let me go to those sections. Um, right, so I, I think you remember what we said um, about this. Right. Here in this paragraph, I am just demonstrating background issues, what has been covered and what has not been covered. And I, I, I don't go beyond um I, I don't go beyond criticizing what what other people have, have done. All I'm trying to do in a in a in a background section is to show what kind of um, what kind of issues, uh, what, what research has done and what research uh, is, is perhaps not, uh, not done. Then if I go to, uh, I hope I will find that, if I go to, uh, to, 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 the, to the literature review, let me see. Right. Um, here I'm coming out God's blessing, or we are coming out God's blessing. In, in, in what we we are we are looking we are looking at uh, and, and so forth. So we, we are saying um, student as a customer in HE context makes the relationship commercial. The marketization of HE was necessitated by increased cost of managing HEIs and decreased government funding. Consequently, students are being treated as customers. Right, it's us coming out in here and making our voice heard. That based on this, as authors, we are now saying students are being treated as customers. However, so we have put in, um, what is it called? We have put in uh, a statement there and we went on further to say, however, treating students as customers is not universally embraced. So in other ways, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are demonstrating, we are now reviewing literature to say, um, marketization started this way and all that, it makes relationships commercial. And our take is students, in, in, in as much as we like it or not, students are being treated by customers globally in universities. And we, we went on now to say, we, we are now trying to now say, treating these students as customers has never been universal in literature. So we are now writing a statement and say, treating students as customers is not universal in literature. And the idea has been criticized in recent years. So there is a stream of literature that talks about um, students as customers and some people are not happy about it. And the criticism of treating students as customers fail to recognize uh, the way students evaluate their overall university experience, student life um, has marketing orientation connotations. So what we're saying is if you read the however sentence, we have gone on to demonstrate controversies that are existing in this particular 
literature um, and so forth. So this kind of writing is only required for, 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 for the literature review section. In the, in the background section, yo, 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 there is only a few elements or just one element of um, literature review that you need to demonstrate is to just demonstrate the gate that exists in literature. Because people want to understand that early on to say this study is worth it or not. But in, 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 the, in the literature review section, you, you go further and start to criticize other, to critique other people, to have your voice heard, uh, to, to, to justify what are these issues. And you also continue to mention the gaps. But the gain is the only issue that you need to mention in a background of the study. But in a full-fledged literature review, it is not only the gap that, that matters. Because here I have not mentioned the gap, I am mentioning controversies, uh, debates that exist around this element of, of the study. So I, I don't know if I am clear. So in, in, in our thinking, we were saying that those who criticize uh, that the students should not be treated as customers. We were demonstrating that doing that, we have failed to recognize that students, um, the way students evaluate a university, if I'm to say, Precious, are you happy with um, Midland State University? The way you evaluate student, Midland State University actually has marketing orientation connotation, and that qualifies you as a customer. So in, in our thinking, we said, in this study, we borrow the thinking of um, Aboleda and Alonso who treated students as consumers based on the idea that they directly use higher education resources but are not responsible for defining the learning, uh, the learning methods uh, and, 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 and so forth. So um, I don't know whether you, you, you are getting my point or not. Yeah. Yes, that was clear. Yeah. Yeah, that was clear. Thank you. All right. Any other? Mm, Dr. Woyo. Hi, Nyasha. Okay. Can I kindly ask, when you're doing our undergrad, we were told to use the final, final approach. Is it always the case with every background of the study or some studies are different? Or to, to, to say, um, start with, um, let's say what happens in Peru and go to mm -hmm. Africa. Uh, and yeah, go to, exactly. to the world and, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a fundamental approach where uh, people can, uh, can, 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 can do that. Um, but it's, it's not always the case that when you are doing your background, you, 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 you can also start with that. You, you can even start um, globally and then come back home. To, 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 the, to, the, to the organization or to the case where you are doing the research. All right, thank you for that. Yeah, so, but in the, the final approach is, is, is usually good for um, inexperienced researchers. It, it helps them to, to, to navigate the, the, the terrain much better. But if you are a little more experienced, then you, 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 you are not constrained to always use the final approach. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Also, and on that, I wanted to ask, how then do I get to choose my case studies? Anything that relates to what I'm talking about or is there a method of choosing what, what case studies I use or I just pick in? A case study is a, is a, is a design. No, like I mean, like when you're using your final approach, specific hotels or specific case studies relating to the problem, do I choose any or there's a way in which I choose how to go about that? Um, I, 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 let, let me get it clearly. Are you talking about writing the background of the study? Yes, the background of the study. Yeah, so in, 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 at this level, we don't want you to, 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 to focus at, at, at case studies. If, if you are to do a final approach um, on your background of study, you need to demonstrate what research has been done in Zimbabwe and what research has been done in Africa and what research has been done globally. 
on, on, on the subject matter that you are writing about. Not necessarily uh, cases like you thinking about what uh, is happening at the Sheraton Hotel and all that. Th that's not really how it should work out. All right. So, so if, if I'm to say, let's say if I'm to write about uh, sustainable uh, urban tourism, for instance, I, I need to demonstrate what are the kind of issues that researchers has written about at the local level, which is my home country. Then I need to demonstrate what are the dominant aspects uh, that exist in literature on the African continent on smart, on urban, sustainable urban tourism and globally what are people writing about. It, 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 is, it is not about case studies. It's about you demonstrating what researchers are, are, are writing about on that particular topic at a local level, at a, at a regional level, and at a global level. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any anything else? People are quiet. Maybe they are tired. Doctor Oya, it's me again. Okay, come through, please. Okay, am I allowed to ask like other chapters such as uh, what you call this recommendations and further research, or we're going to talk about that later? Ah, uh, you can ask. Ask. Okay, so mostly when it comes to chapter five, which is something that I didn't understand with undergrad, they then tend to say recommendations and further research. How then do I come up with further research from my topic? Or from your topic? There, yes. Is there a method or or what? Let's say I'm talking about you said about the agriculture or tourism uh, curriculum. And then mm. I'm told chapter five to come up with further research. How do I mm. then come up? And the research, okay. Um, you 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 know how to identify limitations of your study, right? Yes. Yes. So further research is it emanates from the limitations of the study you have identified. Okay, like in the case you say that if I used a qualitative approach, someone can use a quantitative approach, something like yes. that. Yes, so you would now say uh, further, in further research, uh, future researchers, they need to uh, to use this kind of approach and all those kind of, of, of stuff because you didn't use it. So let me just, I, I don't know whether my screen is, share, is, share, is shared, are you able to see it? Yes, it's shared. Okay, so we are saying this study used a sample that was drawn from five universities in Zimbabwe. Further research must take into account more African universities with more students using probability sampling to enhance generalizability of the results. Did you hear that? Okay, yes, I have. Right, so we, oh, we, were, right. We, are, we are saying to the oh, audience that... that Oh, okay. So we are saying to the audience that uh, our study is limited to only five universities in a certain country, and we are directing future researchers uh, to, to take into account mm -hmm. more African universities with more students. We didn't use probability sampling, but we are encouraging future researchers to use probability sampling so that um, generalization of the results is enhanced. Furthermore, we are saying and um, this study proposed a model as a pathway to students' WOM re-enrollment intentions through this, this, but we didn't calculate the net promoter score. So we are saying future studies, if you want to extend this conversation, please uh, continue to do so by using the net promoter score. Future research can also validate the model we developed uh, using different countries, country and cultural contexts, so that in the end, we have got cross-cultural validity of, uh, of the model. Um, a mixed method approach is recommended for further studies in order to have a better understanding of re-enrollment patterns in higher education and all those kind of stuff. 
So if you are able to, to identify your limitations of the study, from your limitations of the study, you need to flip that and then convert those ones into the recommendations for further research. Okay, thank you so much. You are welcome. Okay, I still have 17 more minutes if people want to ask or if people want to talk. Okay, let, maybe let me ask and try to, Precious, um, read, read your topic fully and let me get it. Um, I haven't really sat down to come up with a topic, but I was just looking at uh, our home area in Maleme, that is in Matopo, where you find that um, there is this uh, concept of uh, beautiful homes. Uh, okay, I, I have seen like, those. Yeah. You have seen them. Yeah. Yes. So now we just want to, like, re really there are no tourists that are coming. And um, now we're trying to gauge how then can we make that investment that the community has made uh, especially because you want to promote rural tourism within that community. So uh, they've done their part, but uh, it's all unrecognized. Okay, so um, how, how, who, who do you think- so It's more the... of a problem. <laughs> it's more of a problem that I have at the moment that I yeah, still I, want I... to- I hear you. I, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out um, how do you intend to collect the data? Okay. Uh, firstly, like I, I was looking at now our tourism authority, especially from the ZTA side, um, if there even a way of uh, such a a development that is taking place. And then, but now to connect now the gap between the community, that tourism product and uh, the tourists, this is where now I was trying to figure out how I'm going to bring the two together. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that, 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 sounds, um, that sounds interesting. And I think it's, um, it's, 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 it's a good start to, to do. Um, I, I think it, it fits into one of the key issues that um, I, I actually directed researchers to, to look at, because I think in this paper, we're looking at unpacking the motivations, satisfaction and loyalty of tourists traveling to a distressed destination. Um, I, I'll enlarge that quickly. Uh, and um, um, okay, maybe here, let me see. Okay, um, so um, I think there are times where, where we argued that um, people need to develop um, People need to develop those kind of tourism that you are talking about. Let me just see where I put it. Uh, okay, yeah, so we were saying that um, behavioral loyalty is weak due to challenges identified in the current study. Destination managers should formulate strategies at increasing uh, satisfaction, what, what, what to reduce destination image damage. Secondly, current pricing policy, um, there is need. Thirdly, uh, distress destination need. Yeah, here, I, I think this is uh, where you fit in, um, where we are saying um, there is need for Zimbabwe, for instance, to be innovative with tourism products uh, that are sold to prospective travelers 
apart from the traditional scenic attractions, like apart from people going to the Matopos, uh, what else can they see? That the, I, I think that is the concern of your study, right? Yes. Yeah. Because so, uh, uh, those villages are right in the Matopos, but uh, you don't get uh, tourists now venturing because there's no communication or marketing. But yeah, that's because, the yearly thing uh, where... Yeah, because I see Zimbabwe always sell their traditional, if they don't advertise the Victoria Falls, uh, the Great Zimbabwe, they have nothing to advertise in, in my thinking. Um, and I think your, your study is very interesting. Uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to, to reading about that. Um, because in, 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 our, in, in this study, we found out that um, tourists are less likely to return to, to attractions and places that they are familiar with. Um, I, I visited the Victoria Falls um, two times in my life, and I don't think I need to get back there uh, to do it. Yeah. So I, I always think that people will not do that. So um, your, your study is very good. I, I, I think it, 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 it responds to, to this call we are making uh, in our 2020 paper to say that we need to have um, innovative tourism products being developed and being sold. And I think um, you, you, you'll be able to, to do that because tourists are not going to return to attractions that are they are, they are familiar with. Um, we, so destinations, in other words, we are saying destinations must have uh, a deeper understanding of uh, social dimensions, especially around those villages and see how they can, they can use them in their marketing uh, promotional approach uh, so that this, these kind of things will also be enjoyed by tourists. That's a good thing. Okay. Um, Florence, what are you writing? Florence is not there. Martha, uh, I saw Martha here. Uh, Martha, what did you write about? Uh, how are you, Doc? I'm, I'm fine. How are, you? Writing, how are you? I'm good. I'm thinking of writing digitalize. G, G, Digitalization and tour operators business performance in in Hazard. Oh, okay, digitalization uh, of tourism operations in Harad. Okay. Um, and what kind of methodology are you thinking of using? Um, I was trying to use a uh, and question here. So you, you, your study is going to be quantitative? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's brilliant. Um, and you are aware that for quantitative research, you need to have large sample sizes? Yes. But I'm not so sure if I'll be able to, to have the literature which really talks about uh, my topic because when we were like doing the, the assignment on uh, DDS performance, there was scarce literature pertaining to this issue. I think there's a lot of literature lot on of digitization of, of uh, tourism. tourism. Tour operations. Okay, so let me just show let you. Me just show um, you. Uh, I have just I've hit just Google been. search, um, hit Google search, and from Google search, I have found that there is digitalization and automation of transport. This, this is um, a literature that speaks to what you're writing. Um, supply chain and digitization trends, it also speaks to that. 
So I think in my view, literature is available. It's, it, it just depends on how do you search for it. Okay, um, who else here? Tendai, what are you writing? Nasha, you wanted to say something? Ah, uh, yes, I wanted to say that in the event that we never have this interaction, do you mm. feel there are certain fields of study that have been over-researched? Because next semester I will be doing our dissertation. I wouldn't want to fall victim to that, personally. If, do I feel that there are certain fields of study? Come again with the question. Certain, certain foods of tourism that have been over-researched, that they have been done to death, that we shouldn't look into when we want to choose our topics. Yeah, like looking at the impacts of tourism, uh, that one is, 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 is generally over-researched. There, there are actually many, many good ideas of um, uh, of of um, of of doing research that you you can you can find uh, and um, most of the things that I think people at the moment should be writing about uh, in in my view people should be writing around um, uh, issues of um, automation of of the tourism industry. Um, issues of uh, Black Lives Matter and tourism, uh, issues around um, um, COVID-19 and tourism, um, issues around, uh, what else did I want to say, uh, repressive governments and tourism, internet shutdowns uh, and tourism, boycotts, boycotts, uh, and all those kind of stuff. Uh, I was following a story around Den Dairy where they want to evict um, 12,000 families in Chirezi uh, and, 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 and so on. So the, the, there are really a lot of issues that people can write about. Smart, smart tourism, uh, urban tourism. Urban tourism has not been written much about uh, city branding, uh, place branding, uh, all those other aspects are relatively new areas that people can 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 start to think about um, and and so forth. Mm -hmm. More specifically, maybe the intersection of um, ICT and tourism. People can can write more about that. Okay. Thank you, Doc. Yes. So there are really many aspects, or even um, what's your take around um, e-learning in, in tourism and hospitality management? The, the, that's also another area to explore, especially these days uh, in, in a pandemic. Um, issues around sustainable tourism. Uh, how is tourism going to, to, to look like? Uh, in, um, in, in, in during this pandemic and a few years after pandemic, and I'm sure we, we are not going to travel uh, like before. Th those are other issues that people can actually think about, uh, about writing and so forth. Okay. Uh, you've yes. given me a lot to think about. <laughs> yeah, there's, there, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot that people can, uh, can, can, can think about. Um, and I think there is also, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll share with Regis, there is also a conference happening in May um, online. It's free. You, you can actually join it and see what are people writing about. Uh, what are they presenting? You get new ideas from there and try to see, okay, if they are doing it in Jordan, uh, how about doing it in Zimbabwe? What kind of aspects do I need to write about? Uh, so conferences could, could also be uh, good sources of, um, of, of, of information about what is the latest aspect that we should be writing about. Okay, thank you so much. Yes. Um, Doc, may I ask another question? Yes, please. Uh, this question is uh, maybe more related to my career because I'm also in the education field. So I find that um, the kind of research that our students are expected to do is, I don't know whether should I say it's mixed. They 
conduct a research and they come up with a paper. And then they're also supposed to come out with a new product. In that case, what kind of methodology are they supposed to use? Because I've seen so many and we, there's no consensus as to what is the appropriate methodology that they're supposed to be adopting. Because you find that it's more innovative, they're coming out with new different products, but they're supposed to conduct research before they come out with a new product and then write one paper that's also going to show that new product development process. Oh, okay. Um, methodologies, they, they, they remain those ones, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods. But uh, from most of the applied, um, most of the applied research, like you are saying, uh, they, they need either designs that are experimental uh, or that are quasi experiments for, for them to, to, to really work those things, those things out. But on, on the methodology aspect, it's either they do it um, quantitatively or qualitatively, uh, or they do it in a mix, but their designs should, should be more on the, on, on the, on, on the experiments or the quasi-experiments. Okay. Then, yeah, they, their designs. Oh, right. no, thank you so much. <laughs> because we've oh, had you. case studies and yet someone is going to come up with a new product. And yeah. I'll be <laughs> this might might work, but it, it it is kind of difficult if if the outcome is is a curation of of a product or so forth because you you really need to test some stuff there. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I don't know. Maybe um, uh, I, I think we should end here. Um, I hope you got the, the, the link of the last lecture. Uh, I will share the link of this lecture too, so that maybe um, when you have time, you just go through over it and, uh, and see how it is going to, to help you. All right, so um, it's goodbye for now uh, until we meet again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, but we wanted to find out whether we are going to have another one as well, so that at least we can also be ready and prepared for it. Mm, I'm not sure. Okay, because I, I saw like Doc was also saying we can agree and organize on the next lecture. Um, I think he gave us something. Um, just a moment, let me uh, check uh, what he, he said so that we can agree. Just a moment. About data analysis. Oh, data analysis. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and then we will look at it. Maybe um, I have a, a very hectic week. Maybe Saturday next week, but I'm, I need to confirm what the time will be. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. think time is also yeah on Saturday's time is somehow, but I think it's it's very possible. Oh, okay. So I, I hope we will have... not have the uh, uh, journeys in the afternoon so that we can shift it to afternoon than mornings. No, I won't, I won't be having. I won't be having. Okay, then that would be great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doc. All right, you. you're welcome. All right, so see you. Then we, we keep the same link. Then I will communicate what time it will be. Okay. All right. No All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.